Well, hi again, everybody, and welcome to our Furman Softball Weekly Wind-Up. I am Dan Scott, voice of the Paladins, along with Stacy Johnson Whitfield, Furman University softball coach, coming off of uh, a very interesting week for our softball program. Two and three, four one-run games in the five played, and um, well, Stacy, good to see you. Good happy see you happy post Easter. <laughs> Thank you. And um, you and I were talking right before we started recording the show. This this week is kind of a microcosm of your entire season, right? <laughs> yes, it has been. It would. Um, we definitely have had our share of uh, one, two, three run games. So this weekend was no different. Yeah, as I said, two and three, four one run games. You found a way to win two of those. You split a doubleheader at Charleston Southern on. Wednesday, you lost the first two games of the Sanford series, a doubleheader on Friday, a one-run game, and then an eight-nothing loss. But then you bounced back and and won the the one-nothing finale on Saturday. So let's kind of take them in sequence. Let's go back to uh, Charleston Southern on Wednesday and, and talk about that doubleheader. Um, well, we went into Charleston Southern knowing that they were a pretty good team. They have about the same record we do. Um, they've they're a bit gritty and they fight a lot also, but we went in just knowing that we're going to try to play our game. And the first game, um, we gave Emmy Buzzhard her first start and she threw a fantastic game. All seven um, coming back from her back injury over the winter. Um, but she did great. Uh, Riley Ludlam had two home runs in that game to kind of help us push over for the win. Um, but we, we played solid defense. We, we, we did really well. Second game, um, we were starting Sierra Tufts just to kind of give her a couple of innings. Um, I didn't want to throw too much knowing that she was probably gonna throw a lot over the weekend. Um, she threw well. Um, I, we were able to throw Shelby Bassowin for a couple of innings. She did well. Um, Bailey Tanner got in there and, uh, you know, they, they were just fighting back at us. They, they came back and they tied it up and, uh, it was a back and forth uh, until the I think the ninth inning is when it when it all went down. But you know, uh, like I said before, we're gonna have those tough games this year. We're gonna be playing some teams pretty close, and I asked them to compete, and they competed. Doesn't make it any easier to lose, but um, you know, I think that we played a pretty good series against a pretty good team. So you know, going off of that, and then going into this past weekend playing Samford. Sanford was undefeated going in SoCon so far. They were a really solid team this year. Um, we played very well against them the first game. Sierra once again threw another great game. Uh, we just couldn't couldn't pull out the win. And then second game, I feel like we we might have lost ourselves a little bit. Um, but the most important thing is you come back on a Sunday and we battled Sierra. I only planned on throwing her two or three innings. And she wanted the ball, and she had one of the best outings um, that we've seen her have. So, came yeah. out with a win. You got a one nothing win, so you're able mm-hmm. to come out of there with a, with a little bit of momentum, salvage something on that weekend. So you mm-hmm. so you, you you feel, I won't say you feel great, but but you don't feel awful at the same time, right? Oh yeah, and like I said, Samford was undefeated. I think they were eight zero going into Sunday in SoCon. So they're gonna um, give a UNCG or um, you know or a chat a run for the money for SoCon, I think, this year. But um, I think coming back and giving them the first loss and battling the way we did um, was a great show of what our team can do and is what we're made of and that we're not going to be uh, run over by anybody, that everybody's going to have to come out and play against, play against us every game. What is your pitching philosophy? What, what do you want it to be? And, and how have you had to adjust that? this season based on what you have on this current roster? Um, well, I came into this year knowing obviously the three pitchers we had back from last year um, and then having a bunch of freshmen coming in and not really knowing who was going to step up. Right away, Sierra showed that she worked very hard over the summer. She came in and she had a fantastic fall. So I knew automatically she was going to be one of our top go-tos. Um, and I was honest with the rest of the pitching staff. I said, you, I want somebody who wants the ball. I want somebody who's going to fight. Somebody's going to have a presence on the mound. That's what I'm looking for. Who wants the ball? And I think in the beginning of the season, we tried to 
give as many people as many innings as possible to kind of see who that would be. Uh, of course, Laura Lee Scott kind of stepped up a little bit. She threw very well. Starting against Georgia Tech, she threw well. Um, you know, so she kind of stuck in that position, but it's always a battle. Nobody, Nothing's set in stone. So I think when Emmy Buzzhard got um, – she got cleared to play, she was ready to start pitching. And she has gone in and has improved every outing that she's had. And, and you know, we're probably going to see more innings out of her. But, you know, this staff, I feel like they <clears> – we don't have blazing speed on our pitching staff. Mm -hmm. But I have emphasized <clears throat> control of the plate, pushing the corners of the plate with them, changing speeds. We've worked a lot on – finding the changeup that works for everybody, um, which isn't the same for every pitcher either. But, um, you know, I think that Sierra has obviously shown she's done a fantastic job with that. I think in our last 12 outings, she has like a 1.9 ERA. Like she is barely letting up two runs a game in our last 12, our last, our last team 12 outings. Um, but, uh, you know, it, they just have to battle. Keep the ball in the park. Keep the eyes shifting side to side of the plate. Keep the batters guessing. And um, for the most part, I think that we've done that with our ups and downs. But, um, you know, I just I, – I want us to have a chance to win as a team, and that's keeping the ball in the park. So it's, it's a baseball thing, but I, it, it holds true for softball as well, that hitting is timing mm -hmm. and pitching is, is upsetting timing. Yes. Oh, yes. I yes. mean, you, you'd love to have the person that can just go out there and, and throw the ball by everybody. Oh, yeah. And, and I'm sure that on the recruiting trail you're looking for somebody mm -hmm. who's got that – that ability, right? We are. We are. We are looking for somebody who would come in and um, be that maybe that flamethrower for us, that presence on the mound that would be a good uh, one or two to what we have already. Um, you know, it like I said, we have like the most unorthodox uh, reliever I think in softball right now with Bailey Tanner. You know, she's maxing out at fifty five, fifty six miles an hour. She's a change that comes in around forty two, but. She works for us, and she mixes speeds very well, and she can throw that change up for a strike. So it makes it hard to not swing. So in this past summer, I told her, <clears throat> make sure you work on your faster pitches, like a curve or a screw or a fastball even, just to make sure that every team has to swing at two speeds. You know, if you're only throwing your change up as a strike, but your fastball, your curve are always a ball, then the pit, then the hitters have it easier because they're looking at one speed to swing at. They can lay off anything harder because it's not going to be a strike. They and they'll learn to hit the changeup. And she's done a really good job this year, being able to show both sneaking a fastball in on the hands that makes it look like a sixty when your changeup is forty. Mm -hmm. You know, so she's done a great job for us in relief. But it would be nice to have somebody who throws a little bit harder in yeah, relief too. Well, that, that all, that, <clears throat> no pressure. All you have to do is go recruit that person, yeah. right? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. We're already on that. We're on it. <laughs> <clears throat> how have your uh, how have your have your ladies responded to to all, all of the adversity and and all of the the coaching and and the things that you've wanted to do? And I think we touched on it briefly a little bit last week with the circumstances of you coming in and taking the job. And you know, here we are, uh, you know, thirty nine games into the season now. H how do you feel like they've responded to what you've wanted them to do? Um, I think they've responded very well, um, and I. I believe that they are buying in to what I'm trying to create here. Um, you know, I know it's going to be hard for freshmen to come in because um, obviously I was not the coach that they initially were coming in to see, but um, I've tried to create an atmosphere that they feel like they can talk to me. They can talk to any of the other coaches. Um, they could talk to each other. Uh, it's a very open atmosphere, I think, and we're all honest with each other. So, um, you know, I think that they're responding to me well. I think they're responding to what we know our strengths are as a team this year. Um, and I think that's very important to know, like, where your strengths are, what you can work on, obviously, but – and then trying to stay within your strengths and not trying to overreach to something you're not either, you know, but growing gradually and consistently. So here, here's one of those those probing interviewer questions. It's normally where the guy leans in, you know. And he, <laughs> Don't he, get too he, serious. He, he gets he gets really serious. <laughs> it's, you know, a really dramatic pause uh, because you had an outstanding career as a player, and and uh, you, you've you've done so many different things in in coaching before you you took this job. What have you learned about yourself this season? 
Um, how's, I, the, how's that for a dramatic <laughs> question? Oh gosh, this is <laughs> how much time do we have now? <laughs> um, um, <clears throat> I think I have learned that maybe uh, over the years, as much as I thought I was um, not, I I've cut my, I probably cut myself short before this year. I don't think I knew what I was actually capable of as a coach. I knew I was capable, obviously, as a player and as a pitching coach. But I don't know if I knew exactly what I was capable of as a head coach and as being put into this leader role. Um, it, but now I can't imagine doing anything else. Mm -hmm. I feel like this is what I was meant to do. Um, and I know that sounds so corny, but it – it's true. Like I can't imagine myself doing anything else now, and and just surprising myself with how much knowledge I have gained within the past year, and I think how much growth, and how much more growth I have, but how much I have grown <clears throat> in that role as the true leader this year um, has it has been nice nice to feel you know comfortable and confident in the role that I'm in right now. What about time management skills? <clears throat> well, honestly, I think being a mom, <laughs> being a mother of two, ding, 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 <laughs> ding, ding, ding. and also, you know, it was my own business prior to this. So I ran my own schedule. Um, I, it was kind of the same with that. So between those two things and, and having a business and scheduling my lessons around my two very active children who also play sports and travel sports has totally prepared me to take on this and be like, Oh, I can do this. I can fit this into this and this day into that. And, and also like helping my assistants and the girls realize that everybody needs a day off. You know, like I, like yesterday I told my assistants after we left on Saturday after the game, do not open your computer tomorrow it is Easter it is an off day. Do not look at any softball scouting reports Take the day away from softball. You're not allowed to look at it. And and a lot of our girls went home for Easter. They have off today also. But I think I also know the importance of that balance, mm -hmm. which I think a lot of people struggle with in this area. But I have found a balance. And my assistant, um, Coach Z, even said, he's like, you have balance in what I'm doing now when I don't think I have balance. So that was nice to hear. But I think – that has prepared me to do take this on too is gradually own business, kids, family, and now, you know, a D one softball program. <laughs> I, I, I guess the, the the one aspect of it that you really can never grasp in, until you're thrown headlong into the middle of it is all of the things you have to do as a head coach that have nothing to do with coaching. Oh yeah. Right. All, oh yeah. All, all all of the things, whether it's dealing with with parents or scheduling or or fundraising or administrative work or, or mm -hmm. community or, or whatever meetings and, and everything else that have nothing to do with what you're actually doing on the field oh, yeah. things you've never had to deal with before oh yeah that's what I think it's funny because a lot of people who just don't know this this business and a lot of my friends or family when you talk about it they think it's only the time on the field you know like it's only season it's only time on the field so when they hear them in the office you know as soon as i drop my kids off in the morning i usually go over to the office at 8 a.m. just to kind of have some quiet time to get some emails rolling and and they hear about the meetings and the scheduling and you know equipment ordering all that stuff it, i mean it is a lot more than just standing on a field coaching the team if it was all that i think a lot of people would be like oh i'll do that but it's not. There's a lot more to it. So we are uh, in the uh, Furman Softball Weekly wind up. It's uh, the second week of a, a brand new program, and, and and starting it at the end of this season is kind of a teaser for what we'll do uh, moving forward. And we've got a few weeks left as this season winds down. This is a big week coming up for you. It is a big going, week. Going home midweek, right? <laughs> yeah, we are. We're going back to South Carolina. It's always fun. Uh, I was obviously with the team when we went last year, and uh, my alma mater is always very welcoming. Uh, I am friends with Bev Smith, so it's always nice to go home and be on the field that it started for me. And um, But I, I, I'm also looking forward to really playing some good softball on Wednesday and the weekend following. Mm -hmm. but, um, but yeah, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a great week, I think, for us. Well, what's the scouting report on the Gamecocks? Well, they're young too, so um, they they've had their ups and downs this season. Uh, obviously, when you play in the SEC, every weekend is a pretty intense weekend. But um, 
you know, they have a couple of hitters, uh, some with speed, uh, some with power. They've hit a lot of home runs. Once again, we're going to try to keep the ball in the park as much as possible to play with them. Um, but, you know, I think we play like we can play, and we're going to give them a run for their money for those games. So. And that's a doubleheader on Wednesday mm-hmm. in Columbia. Starts at what time? Uh, three and five. Three and five. Yep. And then uh, you're also on the road this weekend getting back into uh, Southern Conference play at Western Carolina. Oh, we're home at Western. Western I Carolina. I mean, we're here, yes. Okay. Yes, yep, now, we're home I, again. I misread the schedule then. Yeah. Yeah, we're, well, we've been a ho- we've been away for like two months, so okay. <laughs> it's weird to have us home this often. But no, we are, we are at home this year against Western, and that's going to be another great series. They're battling. Um, they've also had their ups and downs this weekend. They have a similar record to us right now. Um, and they, but they're a little bit older too. So they have returning pitchers that threw very well for them last year. Um, they have a couple of, uh, home run hitters on their team also, um, that will definitely, um, be, you know, uh, battles for our pitchers to throw against, but one game at a time, one pitch at a time, and it could go either way this weekend. Well, as a coach, I know you, you have to take that mode, one one game at a time, one pitch at a time. As a member of the media, I can say if you sweep this series, all of a sudden you're sitting at 500 in, in conference play. Yes. <laughs> I don't like to go that far ahead. <laughs> um, yes, we do. Uh, if we if we can, by chance, win all three, we will be even. Um, you know, and last year we didn't have our best series against Western, um, and I feel like we didn't play our best ball last year. Um, so I am definitely looking forward to seeing them at our home field and being able to actually give them some ball games this year and coming out with some wins. Well, that's a doubleheader on Saturday at Pepsi Stadium starting at 1 o'clock, first game. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then uh, the uh, series wraps up with a 1 p.m. game on Sunday also yes. at Pepsi Stadium. So uh, in, in uh, uh, basketball and football, whenever these two schools get together, my buddy Daniel Hooker, who's the sports information director at Western Carolina, always calls these the battle of purple supremacy <laughs> or for purple supremacy. Yes. So you, you, yes. you have you have that mantle to carry as you go into <laughs> this weekend. Yes. Always something special about going back home, though, isn't there? Going back to, to yes. Wednesday. Yeah. Yes. I mean, uh, I mean, they're, they're glad to see you, but mm-hmm. not but not so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I love Columbia. I, I'm originally from Pennsylvania. So Columbia was obviously home for me. For many years, um, my husband played football there. Uh, he, we started dating when I was a junior there. So there's a lot of memories, not even including, you know, softball. Like he proposed me on that softball field. So there's a lot of memories whenever I come back to Beckham Field. Um, I love seeing the Beckhams. Uh, they come to like every game and they cheered everybody on forever. So I love seeing them too. Um, but um, it's always. It's always a magical feeling to be back on Beckham Field. And, so. and now you want to go in and you want to spank them twice yeah. and get out of there, right? Yeah, now I want to beat them. <laughs> now I'd like to that, take a win. <laughs> funny how that works. Yes, yes. Well, it, it's it's going to be uh, it's going to be a good week. Um, as we get set to wrap it up, you 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 feel like this this thing you know, record aside, you you feel like it's headed in the right direction. I do, I do. Um, as long as we keep battling after those tough, tough losses and proving that we can also win those those tough games, I think that that's always momentum moving forward. You know, like in, uh, you know, I tried to talk to the girls before the games in the series this week and telling them that, you know, we emphasize be where your feet are, but you also want your feet moving forward. So anyway, anytime you make an error, anytime that you happen to have the best at bat, trying to get yourself to feel as if any movement, any talk to yourself is going to only move you forward. So positive talk to yourself, positive reinforcement. When you happen to make a bad play, don't dwell on the negative because that will keep your feet where they are backwards. So we're trying to move forward. And if we keep doing that, I think that we'll grow the way I know we can grow. Well, forward this week is Wednesday at South Carolina for a 3 p.m. doubleheader. Mm -hmm. And then here at Pepsi Stadium on Saturday, for a doubleheader with Western Carolina starting at 1 o'clock and then 1 o'clock on Sunday for the single-game series finale uh, in uh, SoCon weekend. So uh, it's going to be a big week, and let's see how things shake out for you. Yes, yes. 
Go enjoy the rest of your day off. <laughs> got kid duty today, right? I got kid duty. We're going to a movie. It's rainy out, so we're just going to hang out today for one last day. Sounds like a plan. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. That is uh, Stacy Johnson Whitfield. This has been the uh, Furman Softball Weekly Windup. We'll be back again next Monday for another look back and a look ahead at the week to come. And I hope you have enjoyed this uh, new addition to our uh, Furman family. We look forward to having you back again next week. For Stacy. I'm Dan Scott saying God bless you and so long, everybody.